welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology, and yes, we have finally hit 1,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your support. But today we have another garage sale find. This is a $5 HP Compact DC 7800 desktop computer. And yes, I did get the desktop, the monitor, and all the peripherals for just 5 bucks. So a pretty good deal. I haven't actually turned it on yet to see if it works. I'm sure it does. I mean, these things are pretty reliable. Um, I'm actually really familiar with this type of desktop computer because Virginia Beach Public School System, uh, this is their go-to system. Um, so I've worked with these a ton throughout my entire educational career. So let's go ahead, open this up, and see what's inside. And of course, just as in all my other videos, we're going to turn this thing on, install an operating system if one is not already installed, because it does say white on the side of the computer, and I'll show you that. Uh, but she said there was still some stuff on this, so I can't be sure. Uh, once again, haven't turned it on yet. So we'll install some kind of operating system. I actually planned on doing a uh, Windows 10 video today, so I was going to run Windows 10 on an Intel Celeron 900. Uh, megahertz copper mine processor. So I have a live USB edition of Windows 10 already ready. So um, if the operating system isn't installed on this, I'm going to pop this into the USB drive and then, uh, or the USB port, and then we'll see if it'll actually boot up into Windows 10 and uh, we'll play around with that for a little bit. So um, I'm delaying now. Let's move all this crap off the computer. Oh, pardon my language, stuff off this computer and open this thing up. But before we do pop the top off of the system, let's go ahead and take a look around it. So starting from the front, you can see that this computer is equipped with a DVD drive capable of LightScribe. And if you don't know what LightScribe is, it's actually kind of old. I'm not really sure if they use it anymore um, because I personally have never ever used it. Now, it basically allows you to burn a label directly onto a special disk. So if you need to label something, you can put the disk in upside down and it will burn an image onto the disk. So you'll take it out and it'll have a picture on the front burned in uh, with the laser. Moving below that, you can see that there is an additional um, bay right here, another drive bay, uh, Intel Core 2 Duo, the Pro inside, Windows Vista, uh, I hope Windows Vista isn't installed on this system because that's gonna be a nightmare. A power button, audio in, audio out, two USB 2.0 ports, and then the intake fan with the HP Compact logo and the, uh, the uh, clear filament is actually still on this but if you can see behind that it is filthy inside there so before we do anything with the system we're gonna have to wash it out or not wash it out but vacuum everything um, around it because it is quite dusty moving over to the right side there's not much there's some velcro right here for some reason I'm not really sure what that would have been used for um, and then there's these little clips or buttons on the side that allow you to pop the top of the case off and I'll show you how to do that in just a second you're now looking at the rear of the system. You can see four card slots. The interfaces, I do not know. I believe these things were equipped with PCI Express X16 slots. Uh, we'll check it out when we open it up, of course. You can see a serial port right here. We have a total of six USB 2.0 ports on the back right there. Above that, there's an Ethernet port right here, parallel port for printing, VGA out for our video, PS2 for our keyboard and mouse, and then audio in and audio outlines right here. And of course, you can see our very, very um, odd form factor power supply on this thing. As you can see, I did prop the system up so we can get a better look at the left side because there is a Windows Vista sticker right here and you guys can go ahead and take that because I am never going to use it ever. I hate Windows Vista. I never ever use it in any of my demonstrations. Um, I'm just not a big fan. So if you want that code and it looks like you can see it pretty well on the camera, go ahead and write it down and take it. And you can see the computer label right here. As I said earlier, this is the HP Compact DC 7800. Oh, this is the P version, um, small form factor. I just said it was the uh, DC7800. So small, small correction there. This is the DC7800P, and you can see our Energy Star sticker here. And interesting a lot enough, as I said earlier, um, it does have this little piece of, uh, piece of tape that says wiped on it. So we'll see if it's actually wiped or not because the owner or the previous owner of this computer said otherwise. Moving down. There's not much else. There's another one of these little buttons that allow you to remove the top of the PC. And then on the bottom, you can just see the feet, which are actually all still here, which is great because you never really see that on these computers. All right, let's go ahead and flip it back over, pop the top off, and check out the goodies inside. Now, businesses loved to use these machines. One, because they were incredibly easy to service. Everything's modular based in here, and it's incredibly easy to gain access to any part you want. 
two, because they are very reliable, and three, um, because they were pretty efficient compared to the systems that they phased out. These replaced all the old Pentium 4 machines, which were just power hungry and heat generators um, and everything else. Everyone complains about the Pentium 4 architecture. This was tons, tons better. Um, so very, very power efficient. So let's go ahead and pop the top off. I'm gonna show you how. There are two clips on the side, as I said earlier, one on the right, one on the left. Put your hands on both those clips, push in, and push the cover back. Lift it up, and it comes right off. And now we are inside the system. And here we are. Let's go ahead and take a look around the system. And as you can see, it is a bit dusty in here. I am going to have to uh, clean this up before I put it in service. And I'm not sure if I said this earlier, but this will be used as the new web server for the AA Computers and Technology website. The old web server is on its last leg. Uh, the fans are quitting. Everything's just quitting inside that system. I actually got it for free. Um, and that's a Pentium 4 machine, and it's like a thousand degrees in my closet whenever I lock, walk in there because it's just so, so hot. Um, but yeah, this is going to make a great server. We can go ahead and throw in some RAID cards right here, or a RAID card. Um, and this is using DDR2, so DDR2 is cheap right now. I could probably throw in 4 gigs for under um, $25 around there. Uh, and this is going to make a absolutely beautiful web server. But let's go ahead and start from the back, take a look around. You can see we have one PCI slot one full PCI Express slot, and then we have two PCI X1 slots. Moving over to the left, you can see that the power supply is right here. Is the uh, rating label on here, I wonder? Ha, it's right here I found it. This power supply is capable of outputting 240 watts max. Let's go ahead and lift up the power supply. So grab it by the tab, pull it up, and before I do that, let me get this in focus. I didn't realize how out of focus that was, so just pull it up. And ta-da, uh, really weird form factor here. That's really odd. But you can see our hard drive right under here. This computer is actually equipped with the hard drive. It's always annoying when I go out and buy computers and they don't have the hard drives in them because I'm so short on hard drives now because everyone takes them out um, and wipes them and destroys the data, which is a good thing to do. Um, but once again, it just gets on my nerves. Drive is a Seagate. 80 gigabyte Barracuda drive rotating at 7,200 RPM. And these drives are actually pretty nice. I have a couple of these. One of them's actually used as a backup for all my YouTube videos. And they're pretty reliable and fast, so not bad. Um, pretty decent drive. I'm not gonna use this for the server just because um, I'm gonna have like uh, two terabyte, two one terabyte drives in a uh, uh, RAID configuration. So if one fails, I'll just uh, switch over to the other drive. Moving over to the front, I'm going to put the power supply back down. Actually, I'll leave it open so we can uh, see everything opened up. I'm going to pop the drive up too. This should also be utilizing the same thing. Um, it's a little bit harder to get up. I'm afraid it's going to break something, but no, just fine. Ta-da! There we go. And under here, you can see all of our SATA and power cables leading to the two drives. And there actually is a space right here for another hard drive if I uh, were to add one, which I am. Once again, I said we're going to have two hard drives in the system when it's running as a server, so that's great. Um, and you can see the back of the DVD drive right here. All right, so let's take a deeper look at the other side of the board. We kind of just skimmed over it real quick, and I mentioned the uh, uh, the slot types. So you can see our RAM over here. There is currently one gigabyte of DDR2 installed. As I said earlier, this is DDR2. I believe this is running at 667 megahertz. I'll put an annotation in if that's wrong. And my camera just died. But what I was about to say is that there are four slots. So if I really wanted to pay for it, I could put up to eight gigabytes of RAM into the system. Uh, below that, you can see a IDE port right there. Over here, you can see the uh, power cables for the motherboard uh, leading to the motherboard. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is going to, uh, or oh, the serial port isn't actually connected to the motherboard. Um, it's plugged into a cable on the motherboard and then that runs up to the actual uh, serial port right there. And then right below that, you can see all of our SATA ports. We have three SATA ports. I'm not sure if this this BIOS might actually be capable um, of RAID 0 or RAID 1. I'll have to check. I don't think it is. I'm just kind of speculating. Um, we'll just check that when we go into the BIOS. Now, now that I think of it, I doubt it is. Uh, moving over, you can see the south bridge for the CPU right here. The north bridge is presumably under this heatsink. And then, of course, right above that is the heatsink for the Core 2 Duo. 
Yeah, and as I said before, this is definitely going to need to be cleaned before I put it back in service because that thing is dusty. Moving up next to that, you can see all of the headers for the um, interfaces on the front panel. So we have all the wires leading to that. And then what else am I missing? The clock battery is right here or the battery for the BIOS is right there, um, whatever you want to call it. The power for the CPU is located right here. And then if we took a look take a look at all the capacitors all of them actually look good um, and these systems were pretty well built because they were they were built to run 24 7 because school systems and and businesses would just leave them on all day all night um, all year so they were on 24 7 365 days a year these things are very well built and very reliable now I was taking a closer look at everything, setting everything up, and I saw that the mouse actually did have a PS2 to USB adapter attached to it. So that's really cool. This is going to come in handy because I can always use um, something like this to work with old hardware. Right here you can see this is just a standard HP mouse. This is a standard HP PS2 keyboard. Um, the PC, as I said earlier, did come with the power cables and the VGA cable. Um, so that's great because I always either lose those or run out of them or it's a combination of both. <laughs> this is your standard run-of-the-mill HP monitor. This is the HP L1706, and you'll find these by the masses uh, behind small businesses and even larger corporations because they throw these things out all the time. Uh, really, at this point, 2015, these are starting to be phased out, so <laughs> a lot of the times you can just pick these things up for free. So everything is all set to go now. When I plugged in the PC, it did come on for just a moment, so that's a good sign. The monitor did not turn on, however. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, no, just had to turn on myself. Usually they uh, turn on when you plug them in, but I guess this model um, doesn't, which isn't <laughs> a big deal at all. All right, monitor going to sleep, so I'm going to let go to sleep. And then we can go ahead and power this thing up. Let's see if it works and if it has anything installed on it. I think I'm going to go into the BIOS first, though. Um, so we'll do that. And I probably should have put the camera on a tripod because it's going to be really wobbly um, trying to do this. F10. Did I get it? I think I got it. It is entering into setup. It's just testing all the RAM right now. As I said earlier, we have a total of one gig of RAM. System options not set. Oh, drive configuration or system configuration has changed since your last boot. Um, huh. Okay. So F1, save changes. All right, let me into the BIOS. What? Ah, uh, F10, setup. Please go into the setup. All right, there we go. So um, a different, actually has a language selection for the setup, which is weird. Usually it's just in English. Okay, so we can go ahead and view the system information. All right, so as I said earlier, this is all the specs I've really talked about already. It's HP Compact DC 7800P. Um, processor type, we have a Core 2 Duo running at 2.33 gigahertz. That's actually pretty fast. Um, wow, that's impressive. And then our memory size, one gig, two 512 megabyte sticks. Um, and then really there's nothing else um, mentionable. You can see the system or the processor cache right there. And if we go through the BIOS some more, Storage options, security, power. Okay, so basically, um, I think that's all we're gonna get out of the BIOS as far as information goes. Let's go ahead and check if a operating system is installed on the hard drive. The camera is now mounted to my tripod and we can go ahead and see if anything is installed on the system. So I'm gonna power it up now. And it actually sounds like there's a disc in here. Oh, no, there's not. <laughs> Fooled me. And you know what? We should probably turn the monitor on. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and boot. Okay, so there is, oh. Okay, yeah, so there is nothing installed on this system, and I'm being drowned out by jet noise right now because there's an air show just down the street, and it's killing me when I'm trying to make this video. But I'm going to go ahead and plug in that USB flash drive and set the system to boot um, from the USB port so we can go ahead and check out if this thing will run Windows 10. 
All right, so I tried to boot the live edition of Windows 10 up on this computer and it would not work for some odd reason. Not really sure why the image that I um, put onto this flash drive might be bad or this computer just might not be capable of running Windows 10, which doesn't make sense because I could have swore um, that the Core 2 Duo and one gig of RAM should have been sufficient, but maybe I'm wrong. So you know what I'm gonna do now? Um, I'm gonna make a completely separate video um, about the system running Windows. Um, I, in particular, I think I'm going to put Windows 7 on the system because that's what uh, my web server is running now. I know I should probably be using Linux or something more secure, but um, it's just easier for me to use Windows. So I'll make a video all about that when we upgrade this thing, put four gigs of RAM in it, install RAID card, two, uh, two more hard drives into this, and I'll make a whole video about that. We can run some benchmarks and take a deeper look into the system. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and grab one of the Linux distributions that I have sitting over on my shelf and put it into the DVD drive of this computer, excuse me. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of complaints about that, or maybe one or two complaints, I don't know. For some reason, people were complaining on some of my videos because I was using a Linux distribution instead of Windows. Well, a Linux distribution, in my opinion, is a great way to test the system out without having to go through all the hassle of actually installing an operating system. Uh, so I think we're gonna use Xubuntu 14.04, and then we'll go ahead and boot into the live Linux environment and check out what this thing can do. Of course, we're not gonna have the proper drivers installed, more complaints coming in. Yes, I know the proper drivers are not installed. We will do that in the next video and I will place a link in this video. So let's go ahead and throw the DVD in the DVD drive. All right, the DVD is inside the DVD drive right now. Let's go ahead and boot the system. And did I mention that this thing is dead quiet? I'm not even sure if all the fans are working. This is a post video clip that I'm going to edit into some point of this video. I'm not really sure yet. I'll get to that when I actually start editing it. But this thing is so quiet that I want to actually make sure all the fans are functional, uh, especially the fan for the processor. Because when this thing's sitting idle, I cannot hear a thing. Um, and it is a bit noisy right now because the uh, CD or the DVD drive still has Exubuntu in it um, and it's still spinning up every once in a while. But if we take a look right here, you can see that the CPU fan is indeed functional. If we look behind that, the power supply fan is in good working order too. And then there's one more fan right here. Um, and I'm not sure if you can see it through this little crack right here, but I can. Um, and it is spinning, so all of the fans are functional. This thing is so quiet. I am really impressed. I knew these things were near silent, but I cannot hear it at all. I mean, this is great because my other web server, if I leave the closet door open, all I hear are the fans spinning up constantly and it gets on my nerves. This thing is great as far as noise level goes. So I'm gonna power it up now. All right, the DVD is spinning up. Let me zoom in on this just a tad. Okay, and it looks like we are going to be able to boot into Exubuntu. So I'm gonna fast forward this, speed it up just a little bit so you guys don't have to wait through this. Now, as you can see, we are in the live environment right now. And I have a couple more preparations I have to make before we can actually use the system. Um, for example, I have to get this uh, USB um, Wi-Fi dongle working in the system, which shouldn't be too hard because the uh, mix driver is already on here. So we can just plug that in and I need to connect to a wireless network so we can demo this thing browsing the web. Um, and I think after that, we can go ahead and start testing the system out. All right, everything is good to go now. And what I've noticed is that the color production on this monitor is still great despite its age. So I have the task manager up right here. We're currently using about 21% of the one gig of memory that we have and our CPU usage is pretty much um, at zero while sitting idle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the web browser and Firefox is installed on this. So we're gonna go into Firefox and try browsing the web just a bit. I also want to see if I can play a YouTube video on this. Um, once again, I know proper drivers aren't installed, uh, but I think a system of this caliber should be fine on Linux, uh, trying to play a YouTube video without the proper drivers. So www.youtube.com.
Okay, and let's check out one of my videos. Okay, and I'm just going to pick the first one that pops up. And I'm not sure if this thing has built-in speakers. I'm pretty sure it does, uh, because I remember when using these in school, uh, they didn't need a separate speaker set. Oh, there are built-in speakers on this system. Awesome. I must, uh, I must have missed those when we uh, took a look inside. Alright, and playback is actually pretty smooth. Uh, we're playing this at 720p right now. Okay, so this works great. I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised that, uh, that it's playing this smoothly in Linux. Because usually, if you guys follow my channel, my channel whenever we try to play something, um, it's pretty awful. Alright, one more thing. Let's go ahead and try to visit my website. All right. Oh, look at that scrolling. Nice and smooth. That's awesome. All right, so let's just try browsing through it. And this isn't a very good test of the of the system speed with the web browser because my web server itself is actually pretty slow. Um, so let's go ahead and try to browse something that's pretty hectic. Um, if you guys have ever been on CNN, and I go on CNN all the time, their website is just awful. Oh my goodness, I wish I could go 15 minutes without being interrupted. This is getting on my nerves. But anyway, as I was saying earlier, uh, every time I try to go on CNN, whether it be a low-end machine or my gaming rig, it just crashes. Now with my gaming rig, it's really not that often. It's just once in the blue moon. But still, the website is just awful because there's ads and pop-ups everywhere. Um, and it's just annoying. So that's why half the time I end up just going to the uh, Associated Press website. But let's go ahead and see if we can get it to work on this system. What? That's weird. All right, here we go. Whoa, it froze up. Oh, there we go. We actually uh, made it to CNN's website, and let's see if we can read through an article. No, I don't want to install the Flash plugin. Mm. Visiting Pope calls for open Cuba. Why not? Come on, you can do it. The Core 2 Duo can't handle this, nothing can. Yeah, this website is just hectic. I don't know why it's so cluttered. They really need, they really need to redo this. I mean, it gets to the point where I just hate going here, but I have no choice and I always end up going back to here. <laughs> Alright, yeah, you can see that I'm trying to scroll through this and it's just not happening. Oh my goodness. But, it has not crashed. The web browser is still open while on CNN's website, so I call that a success. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to something else. Alright, so I think I'm going to run a couple more programs and then call it a day with this PC. And of course, I will put the link in the video when I have the video of the system running Windows on it. But that cannot happen right now because as I said earlier, I need to buy some equipment to get this up to web server status. Um, and I really don't feel like installing Windows twice just to demo it. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up a word processor, uh, word processor because that's really what these systems were used for. Um, basic tasks like this, like web browsing, word processing. Um, streaming video, uh, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and open up A by Word. And it is a little bit slow, not because the system's slow, but because of the fact that we are running this live off a DVD. Alright, so the application is open now. Let's just try scrolling through the menus. That's nice and smooth. Let's try typing something.
Wow. I swore I typed in hello, but for some reason, uh, it only got half of that. Oh my goodness. There we go. Let's try uh, messing around with the fonts. Alright, and let's make it big. Why not? Hello, YouTube. Alright, so A by Word is working just fine. Next, let's just try taking a stroll through the operating system. Um, once again, there's this is a fresh install, so there's not going to be much here, but we can see um, how easy it is to navigate through this and how responsive it is. Once again, we're using this off a of live CD, so there might be a couple of points where it just stops um, to load everything up. But for the most part, it should be relatively smooth. Now, let's go to the actual file system and go into the system files, because that's where all the documents and everything are going to be. Um, it should be under bin... No, I lied. Oh, yeah, it just took a couple minutes to pop up, and let's scroll through that. Not bad. Come out here. I mean, really, uh, not too exciting. I know you guys are probably getting bored at this point, so I'm going to wrap this up right now and go to one more thing, which is the um, software center for Ubuntu. And for some reason, this application is just really resource intensive. I mean, I, I have no idea why. I've just always had issues with it. So I'm going to open that up on here now. Definitely a bit slow. And this application is always slow when I'm uh, trying to open it up on these older systems. I have no clue why why it's such a heavy application? I mean, you wouldn't think it would, <laughs> you wouldn't think it would be that heavy. It's just a software center. All right, so everything is loaded up now. Let's just try uh, browsing through one of the applications. How about VLC Media Player? Because everyone loves VLC. All right, and that's nice and smooth. Um, so I think I'm gonna call it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And of course, please do not forget to like this YouTube video. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the episode where we actually install Windows 7 on this. I think we're going to make it a uh, upgrade slash benchmark video because, as I said earlier, we're also going to add a red card, a couple hard drives, um, and then some other hardware to this machine. I think I have maybe 2 gigs of DDR2 in the back, so I'll see what I can do with that. Um, yeah, but there's definitely going to be another video with this machine. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.